Okay, what you see here are the drums that I use for the Dead Milkman. I've had these drums since 1976. I bought them when I was in seventh grade. Well, my parents bought them um, when they realized that I became serious about playing drums and playing music. They are made by Pearl. I'll be able to show you uh, a listing in the catalog from 1976. I'll drop that in to the video. Um, the kick drum is 14 by 22. Um, the rack tom, the smaller drum on the top there, is uh, 8 by 12. And the floor tom, I believe, is 16 by 16. And um, I've had these drums since uh, 76. Uh, some of the hardware has been replaced. The tom mounts, uh, the, the mount you see there, Next to the logo on the bass drum, that's something new I added because the original hardware on these drums was not very robust. Um, also, the rims on the bass drum uh, originally came with a black strip around them as well, but that ripped and fell off. These drums are unique because the surface is a kind of a black textured Naga hide vinyl. Um, I've kept them fairly clean over the years. I used Armor All to clean them actually. Um, I do have, there is a fourth drum that came with it, another rack tom. Uh, I believe it's a 9x13, but I've ac never actually used it um, in the kit setups that I've been playing over the years. I have it in the basement somewhere. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Those are the drums. Let's talk about my drum hardware. Um, I use Drum Workshop drum hardware. I've replaced all the original kind of lightweight stands and things that came with the kit originally. Um, this is just more robust and secure uh, for touring and traveling and playing gigs. All the legs are double braced. Um, very solid. And... Uh, you know, almost unbreakable. So I've got this uh, snare stand, I've got a hi-hat stand, I've got three cymbal stands, and I've got a um, drum seat, or a throne as they're called. Um, and all those stands are made by Drum Workshop. What we have here are two kick drum pedals. Now, one is an older version, um, and it's used as a backup. That's the one on the left there. Uh, it uses a single chain um, for the for the uh, cam. Uh, the newer one that I use all the time is this uh, one on the right. It has a double chain. It's a little uh, slightly heavier duty. Same brand, Drum Workshop uh, 5000 series. Um, you always want to carry a spare kick drum pedal with you when you're on the road or playing a show. You never know when something will break, and it's the worst feeling in the world when you don't have a backup. So, uh, let's take a closer look. Here are the foot pedals. Um, the older one uh, is slightly smaller than the new one, a little uh, less robust, but still a very good pedal, and definitely a, a great uh, backup to have. Both have the side spring adjustment, so you can adjust the tension uh, on how hard the pedal is to push. And then you've got adjustments for, um, you know, how high the, the beater is. And the beater has a hard side and a soft felt side. Um, if you want a sharper attack, you put the plastic side forward. I tend to use the uh, soft felt side. Same basic mechanism and structure. The newer ones are just a little beefier. Let's talk about snare drums. I've got two snare drums. Again, always have a backup. Uh, my backup is actually the one on the left, which is a Tama Imperial Star. It's from the mid-1980s. Uh, it's a metal drum. I believe it's steel. Um, it's pretty heavy duty. I think it's a six and a half by 14. Um, I actually had one just like it, um, which got stolen 
when we played a show in Pittsburgh in the early 90s. And the one on the right is a drum workshop, which is the drum that I replaced the stolen drum with. I bought it in a drum shop, um, I believe somewhere in Ohio. They're like We left Pittsburgh the next day and we stopped at a drum shop. And I've had this drum ever since, and it's become my main uh, snare drum. It's a uh, six by 14. It's all maple. Um, it has a sort of vintage marine pearl wrap to it. Um, it has suffered from, from some aging. Um, there's some wrinkles and stuff in the wrap. I'll get some close-ups of both of these. Uh, but both are great snare drums and uh, and I uh, I treasure both of them. Here's a close-up of the Tama badge. Um, you can see that the drum is all metal. It's got an extended snare bed and uh, a pretty decent uh, strainer system. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's the close-up of the drum workshop badge. You can see the finish a little better. Um, this is an all wooden drum. <coughs> you can see the wood inside. Um, if I can find it, I'll show you. It's suffered a little bit of shrinkage in the wrap. Um, and some cracking. I'm trying to decide if I want to recover it, but I think I just want to leave it as is. It sounds so great, I would hate to put some new covering on it and have it sound differently than it does. Um, it's actually been sampled many times in recording studios over the years. Anyway, those are my snare drums. Talk about cymbals a little bit. I have this uh, round case. It's made of hard plastic by uh, SKB. <clears throat> it's um, something that I carry the cymbals around and keeps them from getting bent and damaged. Um, it's also one of the cases that I will take if the Dead Muckmen fly out to play shows. Like if we're here in Pennsylvania, if we fly out to California, this is okay to go on the plane uh, inside the hold. Uh, it seems to be uh, sturdy enough to survive an airplane journey. I've got a case similar to it for my snare drum. And then I pack my uh, kick pedal and my stick bag in my uh, clothing bag. So I've got everything I need. The rest of the kit would be rented uh, for the shows that we do outside of Philadelphia. Anyway, let's take a look at the different symbols that I use for the Dead Mokwin. This is my 20 inch ride cymbal. Um, all my cymbals are made by a company called Zildjian. They've been making cymbals for a very, very long time. And I've just, I guess the first cymbals that I ever bought back in 1976 when I got my first drum kit, um, I bought a pair of hi-hat cymbals that were made by Zildjian and I've just stuck with the brand ever since. It's a uh, 20 inches. It's heavy, but not too heavy. It has a nice, pingy ride sound. It's actually, I bought it probably 30 years ago, um, and it's lasted all this time. I don't polish my cymbals. I think the uh, <laughs> the dirt and things that accumulate over time kind of add to the patina and the sound of the cymbal. So I kind of keep them as is. Oh, this is the underside. And this is the top of the ride cymbal. These are the two crash cymbals that I use. They're both 18 inches. Uh, one is a medium crash and one is called a rock crash. They have slightly different sounds. Um, they're medium heavy, they're not super heavy. Again, they're Zildjian. And I've had, uh, I think the one on the left, the medium crash for quite a long time. I think I had to replace one of these about uh, 10 or 15 years ago because it developed a crack. But uh, if I had to replace these, I'd probably get similar uh, cymbals, and I like the 18-inch side for a crash cymbal. These are my hi-hat cymbals. They're 14-inch new bead hi-hats, and I bought this pair used about, I don't know, three or four years ago. Um, I found them at a music store, pretty big, big box music store, used. 
Um, they claim to be from the 1960s, which is about right for when the New Beat series was introduced. It features this kind of a heavy bottom symbol and a lighter top symbol. Um, the, the pair that I had uh, when I bought my kit in this 1976 when I was in seventh grade was also a New Beat set. And uh, those lasted me quite a long time through the Milkman years. Um, they did start to develop cracks, so I thought it was time to get some new ones. I tried a bunch of new hi-hat cymbals, and I just gravitated towards the sound of these old used ones. Um, they still aren't cheap. All these cymbals are pretty expensive. Um, to get them to sound pretty good, they have to use special metals and alloys, and they're uh, put on a lathe and uh, tuned and everything. So um, cheap cymbals, you can tell. Oh, these sound really great. Let's talk about drumsticks. I have a stick bag which I take with me to every show and rehearsal. It ha hangs on my floor tom so that I have easy access to the sticks. Um, it's uh, made of nylon. It's got a couple of pockets for some tools and things. Uh, let's open it up and I'll show you the sticks and stuff inside. Here's the inside of the stick bag. It's got uh, several long pockets that I keep different types of sticks in. My main drumstick um, is made by a company called Vic Firth. And if I can pull this one out here. Made by Vic Firth. And the size that I use is uh, American Classic 5B and I use the wood tip. Um, I do have other sticks in here. Um, I do play with I think like Midnight the other band that I play with and I use things like uh, like brushes and uh, some mallets and things. So I have a variety of sticks to play on different types of songs but mostly for the Milkmen I use the um, wooden, wooden tip uh, drumsticks. Something that I also keep in my stick bag is a pair of uh, earplugs. These don't really stop the sound from getting into my ear. They reduce the upper end frequencies so it's not quite as loud. Um, I've been wearing these probably since the early 90s and uh, I think I still have some pretty decent hearing left. Um, I've been wearing them for a long time. I recommend if you do play music um, to get comfortable wearing earplugs, something similar to this, um, you'll be happy you did later in life. Some odds and ends that I keep in the pockets in the stick bag. Um, I got a couple of tools like a Leatherman tool, uh, an extra heavy duty drum key, a uh, hi-hat clutch, which is the piece that holds the top symbol on the hi-hat uh, to the rod for the hi-hat. Got some moon gel, which is kind of a soft, uh, kind of jelly-like thing that you can stick on drum heads to make them uh, a little less resonant and ringy. And I even have a, uh, a shaker egg in case I need that sometimes. So just always have a few things. I've got some extra cymbal felts and some other little odds and end parts. Good things to travel with.